What's wrong with you? Welcome to Talking with Docs. I'm Dr. Paul Salzo. I'm Dr. Brad Rooney. We have a new feature in the show. It's called What's Wrong with You? Depends who you ask. <laughs> What's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? So where one of us is going to have a condition, a disease, an ailment, something, okay. the other one of us is going to ask that person a bunch of questions, basically take a, a history and talk through a physical examination, right. order some labs, x-rays, whatever, and yeah. they're trying to come up with the diagnosis. Right. Okay. I didn't make this up. This is how we learned in medical school. Sure. We had simulated patients that would have a disease or condition, and the med student has to ask them questions. Yeah. But it turns out it's kind of fun. It's like a puzzle. Right. You're piecing something together. And it's a lot, it's basically how we diagnose stuff, right? Leave a comment if you think this is an interesting way to kind of disseminate our typical information or if you have an experience with this. Just yeah. let us know what you think. The idea is you, by the end of this, fun little game, you're gonna learn a, about a condition and yeah. understand it, be able to diagnose it, and in case it happens to you, you'll know this might be what's And then at the end, we'll summarize it and tell you how to treat it, essentially. Yeah, right. Okay. Okay, so I'll be the patient for this okay. one. Yeah. So what's wrong with me? <laughs> how much time do you have? <laughs> oh, that's mean. I know, it hurts. Okay, so we're, I gonna, cry. So we're gonna start at the beginning, so... so, so I'll introduce what, myself. Yeah, what's going my on? My name is Manny. <laughs> <laughs> Manny and my last name is Hertz with a Z. Okay, I like it. Manny Hertz. Okay. Manny Hertz. Okay. Want to know my middle names? Clever. Sure. Riley. Say it fast. Yeah, my knee really hurts. I get it. Manny Riley yeah, Hertz. Yeah. Okay. So I'm presenting Manny, Mr. Hertz. Yes. Is presenting with knee pain. Okay. So so in medical school or in medicine, you ask kind of a bunch of questions around the presenting complaint to find out a little more about it. So how long has it been like that? Uh, you know what? I just woke up with it this morning. It just started. I woke up this morning and my knee was really hurting. Okay. And did you have any type of trauma? Maybe. I was at a wedding last night oh. and um, there was a lot of dancing. I was cutting a rug. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Even though it was hardwood floor. Yeah. yeah. Maybe I twisted it. Maybe I slipped. I don't know. Okay. Because okay. I'd had a few drinks. I can't remember. Okay. Uh, might, it might be some trauma there. I can't answer that. Any other associated illnesses that you've recently come down with? Uh, no, doc. Nothing. Okay. Uh, I'm pretty healthy. Okay. No 40, significant past medical history. I'm pretty healthy 45-year-old guy. You're not 45. Don't lie. Manny you're Riley Hurts. You're not Manny 45. Riley Hurts is 45. I wish you were 45. <laughs> Manny Riley Hertz is 45, um, and no, no other. Okay, I mean, so I have a little bit of hypertension, but I'm, you know, I haven't been on any medication for it yet. Okay, so sore knee, 12 to 24 hours, mm -hmm. can't walk on it. Mm -hmm. No specific trauma. It's never happened before. Okay, so I'd like to go to the physical exam part. I'd like okay. to have a look at your knee. Tell me what, what, what are we finding? Okay, so you, 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 what you see on physical exam is a devilishly handsome man. Okay, so someone else came in. <laughs> All right, wow. so I'll <laughs> an ugly guy, 45, <laughs> carrying a few extra pounds. Okay, and the knee is looks like it hurts. Okay, it's okay. red, yep. hot, swollen. Okay, and so it's bent a little bit. Okay, and can you can you get it fully straight? Do you have a normal range of motion? And it hurts a lot when, when when you ask him to try and straighten it out. Can't get it fully straight. No. Okay, and a, and a range of motion is really important. So when you have a sore joint, you can't move it. This indicates that you either have something kind of blocking that motion or that it hurts too much. Yeah, flexes to about 60, 70 degrees. Okay. Okay, so that, that's useful. Okay, it, it, leave a comment now if you've guessed what this is, okay. and leave a timestamp of when you guessed what this is. Just whatever you think it is, just put it, put it in, because right now it could be a bunch of things, you're not wrong. So. All right, so order an x-ray. Okay, x-ray is actually normal. Okay, uh, and then and then I, I probably, so this at this point I'd, in medicine, you make a decision on what are the most common things that are gonna cause, it's called a, a differential, differential diagnosis. diagnosis. Jinx. So what are the top three or top five things that could cause a story like this? So for me, as an orthopedic surgeon, when someone has these kinds of signs and symptoms, if it's a lot of pain, I worry first about a, a set, what's called a septic joint or an infection, infection that is inside the joint. That's gotta be ruled out. Yeah. I worry about it for a couple of reasons. One, because it presents like this, and two, because it's it's time sensitive. We have to deal yeah. with it relatively quickly. So that's that's number one that I have to make sure that it, that it isn't. Mm -hmm. um, thankfully, it's pretty uncommon. Mm -hmm. but, so that's on my list. I would say number two is something from inside of the knee or something called an internal derangement. So maybe you have a torn meniscus, maybe you have a Good. loose body that's gotten Good. stuck there, and that's why you can't bend it, and that's why it's sore and swollen. Number three would be something like gout, okay. like an inflammatory um, arthritis, an acute inflammatory arthritis. Number four on that category maybe would be pseudo gout. Mm -hmm. um, okay. That's kind of that's probably okay. the ones that are. And I top throw of my just list. an exacerbation of underlying arthritis there, sure. or a rheumatologic an, arthritis. Oh, or RA flare. Yeah, like a monoarticular 
uh, inflammatory condition could be uh, rheumatoid arthritis or psoriatic arthritis or some kind of thing. Okay, right. so I'll help you out there. Okay. I'll say afebrile. Okay, that's okay. good. Otherwise feeling well. So afebrile means no fever, no normal fever. temperature. I am a May febrile, otherwise I feel well, okay. um, and no recent uh, upper respiratory tract infection, urinary tract infection, or source for a sepsis. Okay, because okay. spontaneous infections, A, in our body are common, but spontaneous infections in the joint are actually quite uncommon. Yeah, okay. Okay, so I'm going to order some blood work. Okay. And specific to this, not only just a, a blood count to see if there's a sign of infection, but I also, because of my curiosity about gout, I'm going to order a uric acid level. Okay, good. All right, so I'm going to, so in that, in that blood panel, my white blood cells are normal. Okay. My hemoglobin's normal. Yeah. Um, if you order an ESR, uh, erythrocyte, erythrocyte sedimentation rate, which measures inflammatory conditions, that's going to be high. Right, because it's kind of generically elevated in an inflammatory yeah. situation. My CRP is going to be low. Um, and let's say my uric acid is a little bit elevated. Is a little bit elevated. Okay, so anyone that knows anything about gut now is thinking, okay, well, maybe maybe uric acid is the answer. Okay. So high uric acid on its alone in combination with a sore knee makes us think about gut, but it doesn't confirm the diagnosis. No, so no. the only way to confirm the diagnosis is with an aspiration. So okay. I would sterilely aspirate your knee and send some of that fluid off to the lab to look at it. And it's looking at something very specific. Yeah, so okay, so you look at it in the lab and the uh, let's say you do a cell count, the white cells are not excessively elevated but you do see uh, strongly negatively biofringent crystals, needle-like, okay. on the aspirate, right. under so, the microscope. So this confirms your diagnosis. So they use polarized light and it actually shows crystals that look like a little needle. This confirms your diagnosis of gout. There you are. So that was a presentation of gout. That was yeah, a pretty gout. classic presentation of gout. I gave you the red, the uric acid high. It doesn't have to be high to have right. gout. You can have normal uric acid levels. Okay. So, so, what, so what is gout? So gout is an inflammatory condition, yep. uh, usually of a lower extremity joint, commonly the big toe yes. uh, or the knee. Yep. Uh, and it's caused by deposition of uric acid crystals in the joint yep. um, that cause an inflammatory process and give you that inflamed hot me. Right, so so very common in the toe. A lot of people don't even recognize their first episode. So even if I ask them, hey, has this ever happened before? A lot of people think, oh, I stubbed my toe or injured my toe playing soccer or something like that. When really they had an episode of gout that just kind of went away on its own. Yeah. That's the first thing. Second thing is elevated uric acid is caused by eating purine rich foods. So if I asked him more specifically what he was what he was doing or what he ate or drank at the at the wedding, he might say I had red wine, which is notorious for being elevated in purine or yep. seafood or red meat. That's why I threw the wedding in there because yes. you knew I would have been having red wine possibly, yeah. some heavy meal, and also there could be some trauma if I've had some alcohol because I might not even know about it. Another thing that some people feel may precipitate these um, crises is dehydration. So yes. A, that you're dancing all night, you had some alcoholic beverages, and if you had high blood pressure or on a diuretic, this is something else can precipitate one of these crises. Right, and there are some other medical conditions or medications that can lead to increased uric acid levels that can lead to gout, uh, but typically Typically, the treatment for it is an anti-inflammatory medication right. to get by the acute phase of gout, yep. and then lifestyle modification to prevent another flare-up, right. plus or minus pharmacologic management to help minimize the chance of another flare-up. Usually it's allopurinol is the drug that you go on, but right. mainly you would try and avoid rich, purine-rich foods like red wine, right. red meat, um, some kinds of seafood yes. as well. And so, so yeah, usually anti-inflammatories or, or colchicine in the acute attack, the ideal time window to treat this is within the first 12 to 24 hours. That actually, actually is what's most effective. Um, if you cannot take anti-inflammatories because it can be hard on your stomach or your kidneys, or if you had kidney failure, you can consider something called like pregnazone, which is a very strong uh, medication to reduce inflammation quickly. Interestingly, 30 to 50% of people will have a normal uric acid. Yes. Um, so that alone is not a way to say, okay, well, you don't have gout because uric acid is normal. And even 10 to 20% of people that have aspirations actually can have a negative yes. aspiration that does not show these crystals for a host of different reasons. So that alone, if you, if you still were suspicious, you would consider just treating it on spec. And yes. do you think that you've ever seen someone go to the operating room to have a knee irrigated and debrided yeah. um, because they were worried it was infected because they couldn't rule out gout? I'm sure. I'm sure yeah. there are. You you may have had this happen to you. I'm sure there's some people that do, do have schools because we always, because septic arthritis is devastating because if left untreated, it will cause permanent damage yes. in the joint. 
Uh, so there's a, we have a low threshold to try and irrigate and wash out that knee if we're worried that it is an infection. I'm sure that's happened. The last thing, if you've had an attack of gout, unfortunately, there is a 60% chance that you're gonna have an attack this year. Mm -hmm. There's a 78% chance that you're gonna have an attack in the next two years. And there is a 90% chance that you're gonna have an attack in the next 10 years. So if you've had gout, and you still want to cling to the red wine and the steak and the seafood, mm. just get ready. Yeah, you're going to have more. And I gave him an x-ray that was normal because yes. it was my first presentation of gout. But after repeated episodes of gout, you will have x-ray changes that do show yes. some specific degenerative changes. There you go. What's wrong with me? I had gout. Hopefully now you learned about gout in a fun yeah. way. Yeah. Uh, and if you like this feature, we'll do another disease process or condition or syndrome or ailment another time. There you go. And if you like this video, please like it, subscribe to our channel, check out our other content over on YouTube. And remember, you are in charge of your own health. We'll see you next time.